pleasure for me to host this uh, webinar on uh, contrast enhanced ultrasound uh, and its applications. Um, I know it's a um, difficult time for everybody, uh, but um, we're happy to have so many um, attendees, so almost 150 attendees. Um, and uh, we hope to give you interesting uh, information concerning CUS, contrast enhanced ultrasound, uh, and we're happy to answer uh, all your questions. Uh, so the first presentation is uh, my presentation. I'm together with uh, Professor Fabio Piscalia uh, from Bologna and also with Professor Alina Popescu from Timisoara. So uh, they will both um, uh, have their presentations um, after mine. Um, and I will um, start with my presentation on metastatic uh, liver lesions. So contrast enhanced ultrasound for detection and characterization of metastatic liver lesions. So these are a few introductory uh, data on liver metastases. Uh, so usually patients with um, um, primary tumors, usually more than half of them have liver metastases. They are nearly always multiple. They are more frequent in the right lobe. Uh, and there are a lot of um, primary cancers that give liver mets. Um, colorectal cancer, esophageal, gastric cancer, pancreatic or biliary cancer, and so on. So basically for detection, uh, it's important to look at the lesion or metastasis to liver contrast difference. Uh, and there are various imaging procedures. So basically um, you can use um, contrast enhanced ultrasound, which has a sensitivity of up to 90%, contrast enhanced CT, um, which usually has sensitivity of 85%, and up to 20% miss rate. Contrast enhanced magnetic resonance, uh, which has a high sensitivity, almost 95%, but it lacks, uh, it, it, it has some problems. Uh, it has limited availability, high costs. Uh, sometimes uh, the operator expertise is difficult to find. And in ca it cannot be performed in some patients, for example, in patients with claustrophobia, with pacemakers, cardiac defibrillators, cochlear implants, and ferromagnetic foreign bodies. Um, also PET-CT or PET-MR, uh, of course, they have a high sensitivity for liver metastasis, but they also have high costs. So basically, how can we uh, do um, contrast-enhanced um, ultrasound? Um, usually a blood pool ultrasound contrast agent is used um, Sonovu is a contrast agent available in Europe, uh, and uh, the same uh, um, uh, substance, sulfur hexafluoride, is registered in the United States as Lumason. So it contains gas microbubbles of sulfur hexafluoride stabilized in a phospholipid capsule. The diameter is between two and seven microns, so it doesn't cross the capillary membrane. Um, again, it's a blood pool ultrasound contrast agent, so it stays in the vessels. And after four or five minutes, um, usually uh, the gas um, passes through the capsule and is exhaled. So the, the phospholipid uh, layer is then metabolized by the liver. Uh, so this brings an excellent safety profile. Uh, um, it can be used also in patients with um, renal failure, uh, and it can be administered repeatedly. And this is the usual setup. So usually the contrast is ejected in bolus uh, perpendicularly uh, and saline, uh, so longitudinally, and saline is injected perpendicularly. Uh, this is how the, the contrast looks like, so it has uh, specific instructions on how to mix it, so it's pretty easy to mix it, you just have to be careful to mix it uh, thoroughly, um, then the, the microbubbles will form uh, inside the valve. There are some limitations uh, for CUs, uh, which are similar to other types of ultrasound. So, for example, uh, there is a limitation of resolution for contrast-enhanced ultrasound. The smallest detectable lesions are between 3 and 5 millimeters uh, in diameter. Then uh, very small focal liver lesions can be overlooked due to this um, um, resolution uh, problem. 
subdiaphragmatic lesions, uh, especially in segment eight, uh, they cannot uh, be seen all the time. So they uh, sometimes uh, it's difficult to see them uh, in both conventional ultrasound or CUS. And uh, CUS has a limited penetration, for example, in steatosis. Deep seated lesions are difficult to be accessible. Um, then again, the falciform ligament sometimes can cause enhancement defects that may be confused with focal liver lesions. So there are some problems with, with CUs uh, in some patients. What is the principle um, of um, contrast enhanced um, um, ultrasound for the liver? So basically the liver has a double vascularization uh, through the hepatic artery and also the portal vein. Um, so because it goes first through the hepatic artery, this is a, an initial arterial phase. Uh, this usually starts as 10 to 20 seconds uh, post injection uh, and it ends uh, at 25, 35 seconds. Then there is a portal venous phase starting at 30, 45 seconds and lasting up to two minutes, 120 seconds. And there is a late phase uh, which lasts up to, up to 100, uh, from 120 seconds up to 240, 360 sometimes when the microbubbles are destroyed and they disappear. So this is how it looks. So if you have a section through the uh, liver, then uh, in the after injection of the contrast, after 15, 20 seconds, you see the contrast in the hepatic artery, and then in branches of the hepatic artery, uh, then you have the portal venous phase, when you see also contrast in the portal vein, not only in the hepatic artery, but also in the portal vein, still the hepatic veins, uh, uh, they don't have contrast inside. And then you have a late phase where you see contrast also in the hepatic veins. So these are the three phases described for uh, contrast enhanced ultrasound. And uh, there is a guideline published in 2012 where you can get more details on the technique. Uh, this will be updated this year. So the paper is in press, uh, is again a co collaborative paper from uh, the World Federation of Ultrasound in Medicine and Biology from WUFUM in collaboration with EFSUMB and the other societies. Um, and again, this paper will be updated uh, this year. So this webinar is a bit in front um, of the new guideline, the new CUS guideline for the liver, which will uh, appear in 2020. So for liver metastasis, uh, they have a variable appearance in the arterial phase. They can be hypo or hyper enhanced, mostly in the periphery. Uh, because they usually have an arterial supply. Then in the portal and in the delayed phase, they have a rapid and marked washout. Uh, they are usually hypo-enhanced because they have absent portal supply with very few exceptions. Um, of course, you have to differentiate liver metastasis with other focal liver lesions. So they have to be differentiated from benign lesions, abscesses and necrosis. Um, old fibrotic uh, focal nodular hyperplasia, hyperplasia granuloblasts, uh, inflammatory pseudotumors, and malignant lesions, both hepatocellular carcinoma and cholangiocellular carcinoma. So this is how the liver metastases um, look like. So in the arterial phase, they can be either hypo-enhanced or iso-enhanced or hyper-enhanced, and they ha can have this ring-like uh, hyper-enhancement. Um, and then in the portal and late phase, they can be either anechoic or markedly hypoechoic. So there is a profound um, washout in these lesions. And um, I'll, I'll show you a few uh, examples uh, with a movie. So this is an example of a hypervascular liver metastasis. So this is the arterial phase. You see that the lesion here, it's a pretty uh, big lesion in the left liver lobe. And you see it's hyper enhanced in the uh, arterial phase. Then if we move towards the um, uh, portal and towards the late phase, you see that there were a lot of uh, metastatic lesions uh, so if you will look after 120 seconds, after two minutes, you see a lot of uh, lesions with washout uh, in both liver lobes, so both in the left and the right liver lobe. Uh, 
these were metastatic lesions from a neuroendocrine uh, tumor, a primary neuroendocrine tumor of the pancreas. And you see the appearance is quite um, characteristic, so you can easily uh, diagnose them. Then another uh, example is ring light enhancement. So in the arterial phase, you see this ring like enhancement uh, of two lesions. Uh, you can see it here uh, on the static images in the arterial phase. So this was an image at 22 seconds from the contrast, bolus contrast injection. So you see a, a ring like uh, enhancement in both lesions. Uh, and then they wash out both of them uh, in the late phase. So after 120 seconds. And you see one image with elastography, and uh, this lesion was pretty uh, hard, so it would, it has a, a low strain. Uh, then some uh, lesions can be cystic, some metastatic lesions, especially after chemotherapy. Uh, and this is an example of a complex uh, lesion. You see it here uh, with contrast uh, enhancement. Uh, so you see that the lesion is cystic, but the walls of the lesions are hyper enhanced. You can see it here also in the on the left image in the arterial phase, the walls and the uh, septations of the lesions are hyper enhanced. And these uh, thick walls um, do wash out in the late phase. So after uh, two minutes, the walls are washing out. So you see that they are hypo enhanced as compared to the liver parenchyma. Uh, those were cystic uh, metastatic lesions, again, from a neuroendocrine tumor, but after chemotherapy. So after chemotherapy, uh, you sometimes can find this uh, appearance. Then sometimes metastatic lesions are not visible uh, in the grayscale uh, image, so you have to be very careful. Uh, here is the grayscale uh, movie, uh, and if you wait a bit um, for the arterial phase, um, the arterial and then the portal venous phase, then you look at the late venous phase and you see already um, a lot of uh, lesions uh, in both the uh, in the right liver lobe, so there's a, a big lesion uh, here and some tiny other uh, lesions. So the more you move towards the, the late phase, then you see the characteristic washout. So this was in the, the right liver lobe, again a metastatic lesion and some small uh, metastatic lesions nearby. So the contrast is very useful even if you don't see the lesions in the grayscale mode so because they appear after contrast enhancement um, then you have to differentiate these lesions uh, with liver abscesses uh, abscesses have typical features so they have peripheral enhancement in the arterial phase no central enhancement uh, sometimes they have septations which are enhanced um, and then in the portal and venous phase this rim is also hyper enhanced um, so, um, and in the late phase, sometimes the rim can be hypo enhanced and not with no central enhancement. So you have be, have to be very careful when you try to differentiate a liver abscess as compared to a metastatic lesion. This is an, a clear uh, example of liver abscess. So you see in the arterial phase, you see the septations, but also the peripheral rim enhancement, but also in the late phase. So you don't have the specific uh, washout of liver metastasis. So the septations and also the uh, rim enhancement is still uh, there. Then for liver hemangioma, liver hemangiomas are, uh, do have a typical uh, aspect. Uh, so usually there is a peripheral nodular enhancement in the arterial phase. Um, sometimes they have rapid centripetal enhancement if the lesions are small. Um, and in the portal and venous phase, they uh, completely fill in uh, centripetally. So in the late phase, there is complete uh, enhancement, sometimes maybe with non-enhancing regions. Uh, and this is an enhancement of a liver hemangioma. So again, there is peripheral centripetal enhancement. And if you wait toward the portal uh, venous and towards the, the um, uh, late phase, then uh, hemangiomas do fill in uh, slowly centripetally uh, more and more. So you see uh, this kind of nodular uh, appearance of budding from the uh, periphery towards the center until they uh, they fill in completely if you wait long enough. 
Then focal nodular hyperplasia, this is a banning condition. Uh, so again, it has typical features for in CUS. In the arterial phase, it is hyper enhancement from the center uh, with a spoke wheel um, uh, artery, a spoke wheel pattern, a feeding artery, and but it stays hyper enhanced in the portal venous phase with an unenhanced central scar. And in the late phase, it's uh, iso or hyper uh, enhancing with an unenhanced central scar. So this is an example of the spoke wheel pattern of focal nodular hyperplasia. And if you look in the portal venous phase and the late phase, you see it's completely uh, iso enhanced as compared to the liver parenchyma. So the differential diagnosis is quite clear. Then another example here where you see the feeding artery and again, a complete enhancement um, of, of the lesion which persists uh, in the portal and late phase. Uh, you see it here in the late phase. Uh, and here again. Fatic focal change, this sometimes can cause confusion, but this is iso-enhancing. It has typical features. It's iso-enhancing in both the arterial, the portal, and the late phase. Uh, and this is um, an example. You see the lesion here in grayscale, and you see it's iso-enhancing both the arterial, the portal, and the late phase. So with contrast enhancement, it's a clear appearance. It's iso enhanced as compared to the surrounding parenchyma. So it's pretty uh, easy to be uh, differentiated. Uh, and the same is valid also for uh, sparing areas. So in a statotic liver, uh, if you have a, a spared area of statosis, then it's the same iso enhanced appearance uh, as compared to the surrounding um, liver parenchyma. Hepatocellular carcinoma, this is the main uh, problem. Sometimes it's difficult to be differentiated uh, from liver metastasis. Uh, however, uh, HCC has typical feature. Uh, it's hyper enhanced uh, in the arterial phase, sometimes with non enhancing areas. Uh, it can have a basket pattern with chaotic vessels. Uh, and sometimes you can see a portal vein uh, thrombus, which is enhancing as well. Uh, then in the portal venous phase, it's iso enhanced, uh, again with non enhancing regions, but in the late phase, uh, it becomes slowly hypo enhanced. Uh, although there are some, uh, some, um, also some, some, um, some iso enhanced or non enhanced um, regions. Uh, and this is an example. So, first of all, a uh, small hepatocellular, a small uh, HCC, you can see it here. So in the arterial phase, you inject contrasts, then you wait for 10, 15, 20 seconds. Uh, and when the contrast shows up, then you immediately see the a small HCC here. So it's hyper enhanced in the arterial phase, uh, then also in the portal phase, but if you look at the late phase uh, at 200 seconds, so after three minutes uh, and a half, then it becomes slowly hypo enhanced. Uh, and um, you can see it here uh, again in the late phase. For large hepatocellular carcinoma, there is a different pattern. So again, hyper enhancement with this chaotic uh, vessel pattern, um, but it's completely hyper enhancing in the arterial phase, the portal venous phase, um, and then uh, it gets um, hypo-enhanced in the late phase. Then cholangiocarcinoma, this has uh, been a cause of controversy over the time. Uh, it can have typical features like rib-like in hyper-enhancement in the arterial phase and central, central hypo-enhancement with non-enhancing regions. Uh, but in the portal venous phase, it can be hypo-enhanced and in the late phase, non-enhanced. Um, again, uh, because of this and because of the difficult differential uh, diagnosis with HCC, uh, cholangiocarcinoma has been a, a matter of debate, and I think this will be covered in the next presentation. Uh, this is an example of cholangiocarcinoma with rim-like enhancement. So you look in the arterial phase, it's a very fast rim-like uh, enhancement here. Uh, and then the lesion hyper-enhances in the arterial phase. Uh, and then it's hypo-enhanced in the late phase. Uh, this was the lesion in grayscale. Uh, so there are some different characteristics of liver metastasis, HCC, and cholangiocellular carcinoma. The problem is 
if Sius is better as compared to CT, MR, and PET. Uh, if you look at the papers in the radiological community, then you will see that Sius has a sensitivity of 73%. Uh, and of course, MRI has a sensitivity if it's contrast enhanced MRI of more than 95%. If you look at papers in gastroenterology community, then CUS is more than 90% and CT uh, and MRI are less than 90%. Uh, so again, uh, with uh, small differences. So it depends who looks um, at the data and how this is interpreted. Uh, nevertheless, uh, there is a lack of gold standard. So if you look in the studies, a lot of them do not have histology at the gold standard. So they use composite gold standards. Uh, so this is a um, really an important problem in most of the published study concerning metastatic lesions. Some of them do lack um, a histological gold standard. But if you look in meta-analysis, uh, this is one from 2011 where they have histology in all cases, and the sensitivity was 87% of CUs, and it was comparable with CT and MR. The specificity, 89%, again, comparable with CT and MR. And this has also been proven in other meta-analyses, one from 2013, another one from 2018. Uh, again, sensitivity, 92%, specificity, 87%, uh, with a higher uh, diagnostic um, accuracy for second-generation contrast um, agents. If you look at uh, perfusion quantification, this is uh, an active uh, research field uh, if you do time intensity curve analysis, then you get a lot of parameters, peak enhancement, washout. Uh, if it is pronounced and earlier in metastatic lesions as compared to HCC and cholangiocellular cellular carcinoma, then you can look at the rise time and at the fall time. Um, you get very nice curves if you use Viewbox. Uh, and there are some um, characteristic differences in between these three uh, entities. Then again, perfusion quantification is useful for monitoring of therapy, for both radiotherapy, uh, radiofrequency ablation, and also systemic therapy. If it's anti-angiogenic therapy, for example, for colorectal uh, carcinoma with liver mats, uh, or for neuroendocrine tumor with uh, hypervascular liver mats, then contrast enhanced ultrasound uh, is very good for perfusion quantification. And in conclusion, this is the algorithm. So CUS is as good as CT and MR for detection of liver metastasis with a sensitivity of over 90%. It's good. It's as good as CT and MR for characterization of liver mets with specificity of over 90%. Uh, and we have to see if CUS uh, is better uh, because it's more available uh, to the doctors. It has it's it lacks radiation um, and it also lacks, um, it, it has a very good and excellent safety profile. It can be used in patients with uh, renal failure and it has decreased costs. So it can be used for follow up and repeated examinations. So these are the conclusions. So it can be done uh, in real time, it can be performed immediately after an ultrasound examination. It has an excellent safety profile. Uh, everything is excreted pulmonary, so uh, it doesn't influence the renal function. It does not use ionizing radiation, so you don't have contraindication um, for iodinated contrast agents, and you don't have contraindications like claustrophobia or magnetic devices. It's less expensive as compared to contrast CT and contrast MR. Uh, and you can see both the micro and the uh, macro vasculature uh, with similar uh, phases as compared to CT and MR. It allows both characterization and differentiation of malignant focal liver lesions, and it can be used for monitoring of uh, therapy. Um, and I want to end with this picture of the Dracula castle, which is also a bit contrast enhanced by the Sun in Transylvania. Thank you very much. So I think there is uh, one question, if I can see it uh, well, about uh, liver statosis. So I think um, for liver statosis is pretty simple. So um, there are two cases. So either you have a focal sparing, so region 
uh, of the liver which is spared uh, of steatosis and this is iso enhanced um, and the other uh, option is if you have a focal um, fatty liver uh, lesion and again this will be iso enhanced as compared to the liver parenchyma so whenever you have steatosis is pretty and and um, uh, focal lesions um, it's pretty easy to diagnose it with contrast enhanced ultrasound uh, because it will have the same uh, vascular appearance as the surrounding parenchyma and i'm not sure if there is uh, another question there's a question about um, pediatric uh, patients so i think i'll uh, leave also Fabio uh, Piscaglia and uh, also Alina Popescu to give their presentations uh, and then we can um, also discuss of um, um, pediatric um, patients um, as well. Um, it's still um, off-label in most of the countries. It's approved in the United States. Um, uh, of course, it can be um, used and uh, um, I think it has a lot of advantages as compared to CT uh, and uh, MR. Uh, 